G'day, I got a few deliveries yesterday and uh, it's time to have a look at some. Today we're going to look at the 30 litre all-rounder Firmzilla. Uh, I think it will be handy for people that don't want to mess around with a yeast collection jar and, and don't have much space. It's a fairly small unit by the looks of it, but uh, let's open it and have a look. We have a much smaller stand. It's not needed because the collection jar isn't there. Nice and sturdy. That's the basic container. I'm assuming full to the top. It's 30 litres. Nice and small. It comes with the same type of lid as its big brother. Um, it, just for a lid, it's got, that one's got a hole in it for an airlock. So you can use it like a regular fermenter. Pressure relief valve and another fitting there for when you move to pressure fermenting or anything else you might want to attach. Normally it would be the pickup tube. It comes with the normal size seal and it comes with a larger size seal just in case you prefer. This one will be harder to get the lid off but if you ever have any issues with leaks, then you can swap over to the larger one. Personally, I've never had issues with the smaller seals myself. Comes with the airlock, a temperature sticker, and a sticker which marks the liters or gallons. Got gallons on there too. It says to align that red line with the bottom dot so if I did that, yeah, 30 litres is up near the top. So you'd comfortably ferment 25 in there. Depending on your krausen. It also comes with some handles. So it simply assembles like that, but you'll want to do it on the vessel because you'll struggle to get it on if you assemble it first. When you do attach it, Rely on the nylock nuts to keep the handles on rather than tightening it really tight because if you tighten it too tight you could distort the mouth and that way your lid won't seal. If you do ferment under pressure you will want to buy a pressure kit separately. I've gone with the plastic one these times. If you prefer the stainless steel disconnects then that's up to you. One thing I have noticed is they've made the pickup tube a bit more robust. And I think that's a good thing. To attach a pressure kit, you'd simply slide the hose onto that. It's that easy. You will have to trim it. These lines come for the bigger fermenters as well, so you trim it to size, however long you want it. I don't think you need them very long at all. Probably short of the bottom, inch short of the bottom or so. That's your float. Well, these are much easier to get onto than the last one. Although it's still nice and tight, it's not going to come off. I usually use a bit of sanitizer just to help that slip on, but I'll, that'll do for now. Uh, so personally, I'd trim it. You don't need it to go all the way down to the bottom. Might be hard for you to see. It's really up to you. You could leave it longer if you want to leave it longer. But I'd trim that to about that. I'll say about 12 inches. One of the advantages of these is they are super easy to clean. I can fit my arm right down to the bottom there. Without any worries at all. As far as height goes, I'd probably go to the website and get the proper details. But it's around ooh, 62 centimetres high there, but that's with the airlock. And it's probably not going to be much different if you've got quick disconnects on top. The base is about 35 centimetres wide. So I think this will be really handy for those that don't want to worry about the collection jar at the bottom. 
You can still collect the yeast if you want to. You can empty it and then um, pour the uh, yeast into a jar or something and reuse it. Some people will just pour beer on top. I like to get rid of the crows and ring and things like that before I put another batch in, but that's just personal. There's nothing at all complicated about this to put it together. A very simple clean, any sort of mild detergent, um, PBW. Personally, I like to use something with a bit of soap in it, just in case there is any oils on it, where uh, sodium bicarbonate alone sometimes struggles with a bit of oil. So that's about it. Very simple unit, extremely easy to clean, nice and compact. I'll leave a link down below where you can go and check them out. I think this would fit in most fridges. There might be some very small bar fridges that it won't. But besides that, it's a very small unit. I say a thank you again to my subscribers, my viewers, especially to my patrons that keep this channel going. And although my fridges are full, I'll try and get some photos of it in front of it to give you a size comparison. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask a question down below. Comment, let me know what you think. This is my Series 4 kegerator, and there is plenty of height there. And I'm assuming that it would fit in there quite easily. I would check because I can't test it right now. I'd have to pull out all those kegs. But height wise, easily. I guess the way to look at it is if I put it to that to the bottom of the keg, the whole thing with airlock is about the same size as a keg. So of course size wise it's going to fit in my series three over here as well. So this is my series three. It's just about had it. It's very old. Um, it's still working. I've have had have had it repaired once. Um, I've had to replace the fan a couple of times. That's why the fan covers off. It's just about to be replaced again. They get very noisy. I've got a video on that somewhere. But height-wise, there is no problem. And I think that would fit in there just fine. I'll just measure to that back step. That's about 40 centimetres to the front, so there should be no reason why that won't fit in there. This has seen many videos, this fridge, but it's at the end of its life cycle. It's time to move on. Bye, fridge. And just a reminder, this one is a 30 litre Firmzilla. They call it the All Rounder. So when you see people talking about the AR Firmzilla, that's this one. Cheers. Thanks for watching. This is the Czech style light lager. The tasting video will be coming up soon. Cheers.